family of a man killed when a lorry driver fell asleep at the wheel are hoping the tragedy may help save the lives of others. Toby Tweddle was sat waiting for the traffic lights to change when the 35-tonne truck ploughed into the back of him. The HGV driver only discovered he had a sleep disorder that meant he woke hundreds of times each night after the accident. Toby's parents have been talking exclusively to Matt O'Donoghue. Pooley Bridge. Well, earlier I spoke to Edmund King from the RAC Foundation and I began by asking him how serious a problem sleep-induced accidents are on our roads. It's estimated. A leading member of one of Manchester's gangs has been jailed for possessing a gun today, a weapon he bought when his name was linked with the Jesse James murder inquiry. Raydell Waite was arrested and interviewed by detectives, but they found no evidence he shot the teenager. But police say he was a dangerous man intent on committing gun crime. Rob Smith is at Greater Manchester man intent on committing gun crime. Rob Smith is at Greater Manchester Police Headquarters for us tonight. Um, what do we know about Raydell Waite, Rob? More news now. Unofficial strike action by postal staff has brought continued disruption for collections and deliveries across Liverpool today. A mass meeting will be held in the morning at which workers will decide whether to continue their action over proposed changes to shift patterns. But it will mean many homes and businesses will have been without a postal service for eight days. Ralph blonsom has been to meet those worst affected. Today's news now and police in Bolton have arrested a man in connection with a car accident two years ago. 44 year old. Don't drop it. <laughs> <laughs> now to the amazing story of the film of a local war veteran that's come to light after 63 years. Yeah, Jack Sackfield filmed a message for his family during his tour of duty in Burma in 1944. And Tim Scott caught up with him as he watched it back for the very first time. Hello, mother and dad. Now, a dad from North Wales has just about recovered after having to deliver his baby daughter at home by himself. Well, with the mum, obviously. <laughs> uh, with no time to make it to the hospital, the only help Roy Barlow received was over the phone from a very calm ambulance controller. So calm, in fact, today Roy wanted to pay thanks to the man who talked him through the incredible experience. Caroline Wareham has been to meet them. What are you going to say? <laughs> we just T said the dad's typical recovering. Man, typical what man making a fuss. Yeah, I know you're going to say that. Let's move on. Your pictures. It's a stressful time for him. I'm mm. done. And I'm we're done. constantly amazed and delighted at how many very artistic grandparents watch our programme. Yes, but obviously, as we all remember, being a kid has its highlights and its lowlights. Tonight, we have three year old Chloe. Now, let's get the latest weather. He is Joe. <laughs> emails on the postal strike. Uh, Kerry says, postal workers I've seen on the television striking are smiling and appear happy. However, in my job as a train nurse, I could never strike as I have a duty to people, even following the disappointments of our recent pay rise. We work under pressure with responsibility and staff shortages. One here, I'm a postman. It's not about hurting the customer. It's the fact we want a reasonable day's pay for doing a reasonable job like everyone else is entitled to. Megan says, I support the postal strike. My dad is a postman. He works seven days a week and gets up at five every day. Everyone is deserving of their pay to be in line with inflation. Surely the chaos that has been caused this week shows how important the service they provide is. What about all the packages being sent out to the lads in Iraq and Afghanistan? That's from a loving wife. Rose from Warrington says the post strikes are preventing us from receiving hospital appointments for our son. They should go back to work. They have made their point, but they are going too far now. That one's unnamed as well, I'm afraid. Another unnamed one. Good luck to the postal workers. As an ex-miner, I understand them being worried about their jobs and their future. And we have one for here from Anne in Bolton. I feel sorry for our postman. They don't get paid enough. Uh, one from Brian. I think the post, should go, post workers should go back to work. I'm still waiting for my grand final tickets and I can't get down to Old Trafford. Thanks very much for all of your emails. Have a great evening and we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.